Hello and welcome to another teaching from 119 Ministries. Our ministry believes that the whole Bible is still true and directly related to our lives today. If you would like to know more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. Recall that Jesus, his Hebrew name being Yeshua, spoke in parables. Immediately following some of his first parables, because of the prompting of his disciples, Yeshua explained why he spoke and taught in such a way. Mark chapter 4. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see, but not perceive, and may indeed hear, but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. Parables use symbols, idioms, and metaphors in such a way that one familiar with the word should understand the hidden meaning. The Word of God is the dictionary that defines the terms used in the parables. Thus, only one intimate with the Word of God can decipher the intended meaning. So we pray that those hear the following parable, to have ears to hear, and to perceive and to understand. Matthew chapter 25. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. In this parable, there are five critical words that require definition to enable us to extract the full intended meaning. Those five words are wise, foolish, lamp, light, and oil. Remember, the end result is the determination of whom is welcome to intimacy with the bridegroom. Those that have light are welcome. Light is the condition for the appropriate result. Think about this. The end was that the foolish did not have light. We need to keep this in mind throughout this teaching. Let's begin to biblically define the terms. The wise. The wise is one who hears and obeys. He is obedient. From the Tanakh, or the Old Testament, we read in Psalm 19, The law of Yahweh is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise this simple. In that definition, the wise is one who allows the law of God, which is the word of God, the testimony of Yahweh, to work in them. We find that Yeshua used this definition as well, Matthew chapter 7. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The wise are those who have the word of God as their foundation for life. The foolish. The foolish are those who are disobedient. Fools hate instruction. They hate Torah. Torah meaning instruction as it relates to the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 1. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Meaning this, they will not receive God's commandments. Proverbs chapter 10. The wise of heart will receive commandments. 
but a babbling fool will come to ruin. Again, Yeshua teaches the same thing. The foolish are those who are disobedient to the commandments. Matthew chapter 7. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. A feeble and shifting, an unstable and insecure foundation. The lamp. The lamp is the commandment. Proverbs chapter 6. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. The light. The light is the law, the Torah, Proverbs chapter 6. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Oil. Oil is the desire for obedience. Before reading this commandment, remember, the lamp is the commandment, and the light is the law. Leviticus chapter 24. Command the people of Israel to bring you pure oil from beaten olives for the lamp, that a light may be kept burning regularly. So the oil is pressed olives, the fruit. The oil goes into the lamp, the commandment, and then the light, or the law of God, goes forth from the vessel. We need to define fruit and understand how it becomes oil. Fruit is the understanding of the Word of God as demonstrated in the results of a life that has understood and applied the Word of God accurately. Matthew chapter 12. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. The tree is the person. The fruit is the resulting quality of life, not the understanding of the word of God, but rather its proper application. There are many who understand and don't apply, therefore do not yield good fruit. The person is known by its fruit or lack thereof. Notice that it defines what was sown in the soil to produce the good tree. Hears, understands, and produces good fruit as it was already defined as a good tree. The wholehearted application of the Word of God or doing the Word of God will bring tribulation to the soul in physical, social, economic, psychological, and emotional challenges or sufferings for the sake of the kingdom. But he who remains faithful endures to the end. Revelation chapter 1. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on the account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus, or his Hebrew name being Yeshua. So, going back to Leviticus 24, command the people of Israel to bring your pure oil, the desire to obey, from beaten olives, our tribulation, for the lamp, commandment, that a light, the law, may be kept burning regularly, go forth continually. See how the oil causes light to go forth? The pressing or tribulation that results from our fruit, the fruit being applying the law of God, shapes and forms us into oil. That oil is the spirit or desire to send out the light or the law of God to the nations. Let's read it again. Command the people of Israel to bring you pure oil, the desire to obey, from beaten olives, our tribulation, for the lamp, the commandment, that a light, the law, may be kept burning regularly, to go forth continually. Remember, it is during the times that God's people experience tribulation that the law of God goes forth the most effectively. How are we related to olives? Romans chapter 11. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree. The oil for the lamps are from olives which were beaten and pressed. We are branches from the olive tree. The olives are the fruit from the tree. This means that the oil must come from the fruit that we show in our lives, and others may beat and press us for the fruit that we show. But if we stand firm and remain strong, the oil from that fruit will flow. Again, it comes back to being obedient, which brings about good fruit. 
when God commands us to do things and we do not listen, then he will not continue giving us commandments as that voice will grow dim, as in Matthew 25, verse 8. See how easy that is once we allow the Bible to define the Bible? So, in summary, here is what we have using biblical definitions. Number one, the wise. The wise are those who are obedient. Number two, the foolish. The foolish are those who are disobedient. Number three, the lamp. The lamp is the commandment. Number four, the light. The light is the law of God. Number five, oil. And the oil is the resulting desire to obey the law of God because of pressing or tribulation. Now, let us go back to the parable of the ten virgins and see if this works. Remember to always test all things for yourself and see if it is correct. We will read the parable and insert the biblical definitions in the place of the five words that we biblically defined. Please note, we are not rewriting scripture. We are simply using our ears to hear what this parable means by using scripture to interpret scripture. Here is the original parable, Matthew 25. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Now, here is the parable with the inserted biblical definitions. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their commandments and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were disobedient, and five were obedient. For when the disobedient took their commandments, they took no desire to obey the commandments with them. But the wise took their desire to follow the law of God with their commandments. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and attended to their commandments. And the disobedient said to the obedient, Give us some of your desire to follow the law of God, for our commandments are going out. But the obedient answered, saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Now some might ask, why were the disobedient told to go and buy the desire to keep the commandments or instructions? Once again, this is biblically defined, Proverbs chapter 23. Buy truth and do not sell it. Buy wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Isn't it simply amazing how parables are unlocked by knowing the rest of the Word of God? This is why parables are foolishness to many because the scriptures are already foolishness to them, and they have no desire to unlock it. But to those who see the word of God as treasure, they love to go out and seek it. Here is another question. Why are there ten virgins? Yeshua said that the point of his coming was only for the house of Israel. Matthew 15, he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel was divided into two camps, the house of Judah, and the house of Israel. Generally speaking, the house of Judah was two tribes, and the house of Judah became known as Jews in shortened slang. According to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8, the house of Israel was divorced, and Jeremiah also notes that the purpose of the new covenant found in Jeremiah 31, 33, 
is to bring the house of Israel back into the law of God. For more on this, please see our teachings, The Lost Sheep and What is the Gospel? Ironically, the house of Israel consists of ten tribes that are supposed to come back to the law of God, starting with Yeshua's first coming and culminating at His second coming. Using those biblical definitions, it now makes more sense why it is stated that all fell asleep, because all of the house of Israel, at one time, after Yeshua's first coming, did fall asleep. Matthew chapter 25. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But now the house of Israel is waking up, as evidenced by more and more people understanding their Hebrew roots and coming into the whole Word of God. More are realizing that all the law of God is for His people, even today. That it was an error to remove any of the commandments. It appears then that only about half of the house of Israel will have figured it out by the time of Yeshua's return, as evidenced by the five foolish and the five wise. At least, that's our take on it for now. We hope that this teaching has blessed you. And remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.